The White House Thank press corps, speaking of journalism, did a little journalism today. They held John Kirby's feet to the fire over the Biden administration's policy to deter Iran, specifically on whether the policy is working at all. As the president has made clear, the United States does not seek conflict with any nation or actor in the Middle East. But neither will we shrink from the task of defending ourselves, our interests, our partners, or the free flow of international commerce. As they say in sports, let's go to the tape, because a picture is worth a thousand words. This map shows exactly how Iran is winning. They have fully disrupted international shipping with attacks on commercial ships and the U.S. Navy. They're no longer going anywhere near the Red Sea. Ten percent of commercial traffic in the world went through the Red Sea. Now it's going around the Horn of Africa. That means higher shipping costs, higher prices for you. Also helps the Iranians with their oil trade. The U.S. Navy continues to use million-dollar missiles now to shoot down cheap Iranian drones. And so far, Mr. Biden refuses to order strikes on the Iranian-backed militias launch sites or weapons facilities. In short, the Iranian Houthis use U.S. Navy ships for target practice, and we do nothing. Now, the Wall Street Journal reports the West badly needs more missiles, but the wait to buy them is years long. Go figure. Ambassador John Bolton is here, former assistant to the president for national security affairs, otherwise known as the National Security Advisor. Mr. Ambassador, good to see you. Um, what's Iran's next move? Well, I think they're really calling the shots. And uh, you, you've just highlighted the, the dangers the Houthis are posing to uh, international uh, commerce uh, in the Red Sea. But I think it's important to look at the whole Middle East as one chessboard where uh, Iran really is moving the pieces around the Houthis in Yemen, obviously the Hamas barbarism uh, on October the 7th and now the war in Gaza, Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon firing uh, dozens of missiles every day for the last almost three months into northern Israel and uh, Iraqi Shia militia in Iraq and Syria attacking American service members uh, and civilian personnel. All of this being ratcheted up, uh, not, not to mention interference with oil traffic and, and, and other things in the Persian Gulf. All of this is at Iran's beck and call. And it's not just that the administration is failing in deterrence. I don't even think they're trying really hard. And that puts uh, particularly Americans on the ground in Iraq and Syria very much in jeopardy. Military officers have been quoted anonymously as saying the only thing that saved us in the last three months from well over a uh, hundred attacks on our people there is luck. And that is not a strategy. Yeah. And it's not fair to the service members uh, or, or others to leave them out there as targets. No, look, and sadly, luck runs out at some point. And we, we've talked about that, that at some point, the Iranians are going to get either a, a, a drone through and hit a U.S. Navy ship. They're going to hit one of the bases in Iraq and Syria. I want to get you to Hezbollah. Uh, in, in Israel's north. We've said for about the past three months now that it didn't appear as though Hezbollah wanted an all-out war and Iran didn't want an all-out war uh, with Israel because once they lose Hezbollah, they lose their insurance policy, if you will, against a U.S. first strike or an Israeli first strike on Iranian nuclear facilities. That said, uh, you watch this region about as closely as anybody. I lived there for four years. It feels as though the Israelis now may not want a war with Hezbollah, but they're certainly not shying away from one. Uh, they just hit and killed a number of, of Hezbollah leadership today. It feels like they're they're starting to get ready and itch for a fight there. Yeah, well, I think uh, that explains in part the withdrawal of some of the Israeli forces from the Gaza Strip. Some are going to go back, are reservists. They're going to go back into the Israeli economy, which which needs their services. Others, after some rest, are going to be deployed to the north because I think Israel's worried about what may come next. You know, I, I don't think we yet know what Iran's full strategy is, but they've spent three months pounding a significant part of uh, northern Israel, and 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 that could be just sort of getting uh, get getting in motion. And what Israel did here today was go after a Hamas, yesterday a Hamas target uh, who was basically a key official dealing with Hezbollah. Shows the coordination among Iran's proxies and Iran itself. Uh, and, and I think this is uh, Israel trying to change the narrative which has been dictated these last three months by Iran. And, and uh, we'll see what happens. I don't think Israel would have done this without expecting some significant response from Hezbollah and Iran. And they, they in turn will be prepared to respond to that. The question is, 
is the United States just going to sit there and let this develop, see our service members and civilians in uh, Iraq and Syria, in effect, held hostage and, and maybe actually taken hostage if we're not careful here? I think you make a very good point uh, in terms of if, you've, if, you're, if you're sitting on the sidelines doing nothing, the other side gets to dictate the terms, which is scary um, when it's the Iranians dictating them. Mr. Ambassador, it's good to see you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.